you see that? Yeah. What was it? I have no idea. <laughs> I think it's a drone. <sighs> you know what that means, right? Yeah. Yeah. We're gonna have to have the damn ship fumigated again. Oh, I, we're, I think we're on. What? We're on? I, yeah. All right, well, all right, come on, babe. let's get in here. Hey, uh, hey, everybody. Hi, haha. Uh, welcome to the uh, Starship Detritus. And uh, I'm Captain Orlock, and this is live from space. Come on, get in here. Look, this is what I'm talking about. We got These drones things. again. Yes. Get it. <sighs> well, let me uh, go ahead and introduce you to everybody again. We've got One moment, please. Before the music plays, uh, I need. Let everyone's attention in the universe. This, uh, do you guys realize who this is? It's the, the Biddy Haggis Burns. Wow, you're on board the ship. I didn't know you were here. It's a moment for everyone. I told you the drones were a problem. Sorry. All right, now where, I don't, what were we about to do? Play a song? Wait! Uh, oh! Wait, stop everything! Stop the music! We're in a time loop. I you're feel like... I'm having deja vu. You I are. This time but this is a better one. This is the better version. <laughs> Everyone, this is the uh, Biddy Haggis Burns. Uh, welcome. Thank on you. Board the ship. I didn't. Thank know you all were of here. you. All you all here in space. Oh, wait. Um, how did you get on our ship? It's my little speech. <laughs> <laughs> and I have this lovely right. introduction oh. I'd like you to use. All right. <laughs> So everyone will know who I am. Good security guys. It was a great job keeping the door open. <laughs> strange people off our ship. All right. Uh, so this is what it says. Uh, Biddy Haggis Burns, a poet of past, present, and future. Uh, Biddy Burns is a byproduct of self-selection ancestry. Biological parents added the DNA of 19th, 20th, and 21st century poets Robert Burns, Gertrude Stein, Maya Angelou, and uh, Jay-Z. Burns forms her poetry based on her DNA parentage. Tonight's poem... Red Love, a classic in its own right, is an homage to both Burns and Gertrude Stein, though she makes no attempt to include Plant the Red Rose. All right. That's correct. Biddy Haggis Burns. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, universe. I wrote this for you today. Oh, my love is like red, red Mars. We met whilst dancing on the stars. Oh, my love is like radio waves that blast across the Milky Way. As far out thou, my haughty one, so deep space are we. That I will love you still, my one, though the black holes kill, my one. Though the black holes come, my stein, though the sun melts rocks, Though the celestial bodies cry, our love will never, never die. Fare thee well, my love, my shim. Though 20,000 light years part us by, I will love thee still. For time travel, 20,000 light years is but a wink of an eye. Any Haggis Burns, everybody. Yay. Thank you for joining us on the ship. Uh, hope wonderful. you can find your way off again. Find our way on. Good. Wait, find our way out. Harry, where are you? <laughs> Good luck. Where are you, Harry? Well, I mean, okay. <laughs> back to the show. Uh, this is live from space uh, again, and uh, and let me introduce you to the band. This is uh, uh, who's over here. This is Chroma. <laughs> I'm, I'm thrown off by the Biddy Haggis Burns. It's just like, it's so odd that she was on our ship. Uh, so Chroma's here, and she's going to be singing for us. And we have uh, Rusty over here, and he's waving. And uh, here's Parrot back there. And here's uh, Mungo looking like Mungo being very serious. All right. And uh, I'll just remind you that the show is brought to you by no one but us. This is our record. Uh, it is a lovely thing that is available with the comic book. Because, you know, shh. And uh, there's a record at the back. And so if you like what you see uh, or hear, go ahead and go to uh, spacepirate.org and uh, pick up a copy and help us make this happen. And hey, if you're a small business or a, 
uh, an entire planet that wants to sponsor this show, feel free to get in touch with us also through spacepirate.org, and we'll uh, we'll hook you up with sponsorship. By the way, I'm Captain Orlock, and uh, I think that's all I need to say. Let's play a song. Wee! All right. said I was wrong, oh, where have you gone? Lonely as I'm back all night, all I want to say is you were so right. Oh, where have you gone? Close in your head, a world weary stare I was caught in the wake of your storm And you let me sit in your shadow a bit I thought I had found a new home You disappeared, no reason was clear Who's stranded alone in the dark? Where was the fight? Suffering night, the tears that never were shed. Show me us where you go. I gave you my heart. You said I was wrong. Oh, where have you gone? Lonely eyes, come back for a night. All I want to say is you were so right. Oh, where have you so that was it, the stitches were split I seen torn before it was done A gesture of hope, the letter of I carried it with me for years And to my chagrin, the paper was thin Never clutched in your hand Who was the fame that love was the game the truth I did not understand Lonely eyes, where have you gone? I gave you my heart, you said I was wrong Oh, where have you gone? Lonely eyes, come back for a night All I want to say is you were so right Oh, where have you gone? species. It's the white rhinovirus. What? I was in quarantine in the zoo. <laughs> what are you talking about? I got the white rhinovirus. It's an endangered species of virus. The, the, I went to the you zoo. You don't have an actual rhinoceros in you. 
Right, white rhino virus. How would you have a rhino? How did that happen? How did I you went get to this? the zoo. <laughs> did I you don't know. Did you climb over the bars again? Yeah. Uh huh. I see how this works. Yeah. Um, and then I was in quarantine until the white rhino virus went away. They, they had to like extract it. But more drones. <laughs> it's infested in my head. Uh huh. But once they extracted it and put it back in its pen, everything was good. <laughs> they, they extracted a rhino from what part of your body? No, it's not. <laughs> a, it's the white rhino virus. So it's little tiny tiny rhinos. Oh, little rhinos. Yeah. Okay. They were little tiny tiny rhinos that were like, endangered. I couldn't kill them. <laughs> okay. You had to go into the microscopic zoo. Right. That now. See, I had the scale all, all wrong. wrong. This, you were the sweating. fence I hopped over really, really tight. It. <laughs> <laughs> Problem solved. Okay, yeah. great. Thank you. I'm all better. Rusty, well good to know. Uh, stay home. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Okay. Uh, well, let's bring on our first guest, uh, Nathan Wender from RVA Martial Arts. Come on out and say hello to all of space and time. Or just space. We're not just space. <laughs> so, uh, Nathan, you are a uh, karate expert. Is that correct? Pretty good. <laughs> Why are you here then? If you're only pretty good, I only I only want karate experts We're on my ship. Not a karate oh, he's, he's, uh, modesty doesn't exist in the future, so don't worry about that. Oh, okay. okay um, cool. yeah, karate, because, so, so I've heard uh, I've, I've heard a quote about karate. I want to run this by you. Um, uh, it was uh, from James Brown. He said, uh, "I don't know karate, but I know crazy." So, um, how does crazy compare to karate? I would, who would win in a fight? Well, crazy James Brown or, or you? A lot more movements. Uh -huh. Which one? Crazy. Crazy. Okay. Yeah, but not all of them are I'm useful or <laughs> easy to be understood. Right. So uh, as long as it's not too particularly confusing to the karate guy, usually the karate guy wins. I got you. Now, for those of you who don't know what karate is. Um, you might be familiar with the uh, Jacksonites, and they have their special form of uh, dance martial arts. Karate is an ancient martial art, predates uh, the Jacksonites by many uh, centuries. So, um, do you want to explain anything else about what you do, or how you do it, how it works? Uh, well, I can. Try uh, should. Right. Yeah, yeah. Talk a little bit yeah. about uh, what we do. Uh, karate was uh, developed in ancient Earth in uh, a land called Okinawa, which uh, was between Japan and China. And it was actually a conglomeration of many different uh, cultures and uh, martial styles that had kind of uh, congregated on the island over time. So it is a way is just uh, sort of a melting pot of uh, different uh, ancient earth martial arts that kind of came together uh, into one systemized uh, system that uh, has been practiced for thousands of years now. There you go, thousands of years. All right, so what are you going to do for us today? Well, I'm going to show just a little bit of simple self-defense. Uh, Excellent. Yeah. Oh, so qu uh, another question for you. Sure. Um, so you have to fight a robot. Right. <laughs> the <damn> drones. <laughs> <laughs> like a drone, for instance. Um, okay. Well, you know what? I'll save that for afterwards. Right, I yeah, want you yeah, to put this in your head, and then you show us. So uh, it's some martial art uh, self-defense from uh, Nathan, and who's going to be our uh, willing volunteer? I feel no pain. <laughs> All right, Rusty. Uh, Rusty most recently had white rhino virus. <laughs> Rusty is going to be <laughs> has the rhino. power of rhinos. <laughs> so uh, I'll let you guys take over. All right. So uh, I love this. You get the, uh, Let's move the mic up. Are they doing this because you're the biggest guy or the most obnoxious? Uh, yes. I think, they don't <laughs> I think it's both. <laughs> All right. So on a big guy like this, um, what we're going to do is demonstrate some uh, nerve Shh. attacks. And uh, you know, these are very effective because regardless of how don't big break a the ship is, uh, they uh, work on natural reflexes. So this way, okay, come closer to me. Right. So they work on the nat body's natural reflexes or pre-programmed responses that are going to make him move in a way that I can always predict every single time uh, without fail which makes them very, very useful. Uh, and we're going to demonstrate one uh, real quick. Uh, even though he's big and a lot of his nerves are hidden uh, because he's got a few pounds, uh, we are going to uh, go for one that's uh, very, very accessible on just about everybody. Uh, that's right here behind the ear. Uh, so what he's going to be doing is just something uh, generally obnoxious, maybe a little bit threatening. 
at you. <laughs> ah, white rhinovirus. So you want to turn his head away from you when he sneezes so that he won't <laughs> sneeze the white rhinos into your own bloodstream. And there's a simple way to do this. And this is also very useful if he happens to be trying to put his hands on you or attacking you or something of that nature, too. We're just going to reach right behind his ear, right behind the jawbone, and with a knuckle, just like by knocking on a door, turn his head. Ow. <laughs> so, try and keep cold, hold your head straight. He yep. cannot. What I can do with this, if he's trying to attack me, he can't see me because I won't let him look at me. I can also move him up or down. <laughs> ah, <laughs> any way that I want to move him. That's gross. You're not even going to look at him? So, <laughs> door knocking knuckles, right behind the ear, turn. Very quick, very easy, now I can get away. <laughs> and just because we've got him up there, just go ahead and just punch him. Just punch him? Just <laughs> <laughs> that seems kind of rude. <laughs> They don't he like me. You. I know, I know. <laughs> no, no, don't punch him. Thank you. Excellent. Yay! Offer. Give a round of applause for Rusty for being the <laughs> And you see, well, all right, so there's your tip for uh, self defense against people like Rusty. Um, now, my question was the robots, robots uh, yes. drones, for instance. <laughs> Can you hear that? <laughs> They're everywhere. Um, cut the red cord. Cut the red cord. There uh -huh. you go, folks. It's Worst as simple as that. Time. Cut the red cord. There's usually an off switch, I've been told. That's well. that, yeah, yeah. that helps, too. All right. Well, thank you very much. Thanks Hopefully for having me back ship. on the ship. And uh, uh, if people want to find you, what do they do? Uh, they can go on to the interwebs at... Uh, Those still exist, luckily. Yes. RVAMartialArts.com, and they can find all the information they need. Excellent. All right. Everybody, thanks. Nathan, big hand. Yay! Well, hopefully have him back Woo! again sometime soon. Woo! All right. So uh, it is time for Chroma's Crafty. Chaos. Are you ready? It's going to be chaotic. It's going to be chaotic. Chroma is our wonderful uh, backup singer, um, assassin, and of course, uh, craft maven. Is it assassin? No, not. Uh, did I say assassin? We can't let people know this thing. By assassin, I meant. Uh, Doesn't kill people. Does not. Oh. Non assassin. Alright, so let's get a little craft okay. music going here. Why don't we play for a. Uh, oh, craft music. Craft music. Is there craft music? Craft, craft work. So tell us what you're doing today, Chroma. We are going to make some little weapons. Little weapons, excellent. Hey, actually, quiet for a second, then we'll. Uh... Quiet for a second. So today we're going to make little weapons, and what are these weapons? So they're little spikes. Spiked rings. To help with the drones. To help fight to deactivate drones. Deactivate them. So they look like nothing. Put your hands right there. But there. <laughs> But they're a little spiky. Spike rings. All right. So what do you? What supplies do you need to make spike rings? So you need something for a spike. <laughs> Are you going to tell me yep. that we need spikes and rings? <laughs> yes, that's it. All right. We that's need exactly spikes what and we rings. Need. Kind okay. of. Okay. Kind so of. show us the spikes and. Uh, uh, now, where do you get these spikes? I bought them online. Online. Okay. Or at craft stores, I assume. You can. It's you just can. more expensive. Okay. I buy them online. Online. Or um, the Craft Planet. On yeah. Planet Craft. <laughs> the craft planet. Uh, we go there occasionally, pick up supplies. So this is a little spike. And it has these little prongs on it. So if you take these lovely pliers, either one, these are little bendy ones, and you push all these prongs together, it'll make it flat. And this little thing is flat. And this is a ring base. So it's a little circle. So you put stuff on it. See? Come on, come on. This way? Put it right up by the camera. There you go. Right the little ring base. Little ring base. So these are these are both sort of generic craft items that you can find. Yeah. And then what are these? These are different kinds of spikes. There you go. Other kinds of spikes. Other kinds of spikes. So if you take one of these little spikes Oop. and this and this lovely ah. glue that I've heard causes cancer in California but not in space clearly. No, definitely not in space. Definitely not in space. So this is industrial glue. So if you take a little bit of that. E6000? E6000. Right. Get it at craft stores. And then put those two together. 
and set them up so they can dry. It'll dry together. You make a little spike like these. Excellent. Yeah. So, so two ways of making. Yeah. And so sorry, with that one you flatten the spikes and then you bend them just around. Flatten all the spikes and then. The glue them. Just glue them down. This one actually is a fancy ring base. There you go. Um, so the same thing, this is called a bead cap. A bead cap. So a bead would normally go in here, but it's kind of lightweight and flexible. It's a filigree one, which is fancy. And this is too. So if you bend the prongs through the holes in the filigree, you could probably add glue if you wanted, but and then it looks like that. Excellent. And so if you make multiples, you can have a whole... Uh, you can have a whole handful. A, 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 a knuckle duster. Yeah, yeah. Excellent. So show off this how this one looks on this hand. That is pretty tough. Oh, here. Up a bit. Somewhere in there. All right. Yeah. Awesome. So a little bit of glue, a couple of little pieces, and you've got awesome... Little tiny weapons. Tiny they weapons. They probably would hurt if you punch them on. I would assume. Using your newly understood uh, skills as a martial artist. So you're not supposed to tell people what I do No, no, I'm saying from, from, from our guests. Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. yes, I'm sure that that would help as well. Excellent. That All right, hurt. is there a name for this craft? Uh, they're just spike rings. Spike rings. All right, spiked rings from Chroma. Thank you, Chroma, and your crafty, crafty chaos. Mm -hmm. Awesome. All right. So, um, well, I forgot to mention before, well, so while she's packing up here, uh, those of you watching live, no matter where you are in space and time, um, this show goes through a wormhole, and I know that people in the past get it. So if you want to know anything about the future, which is where we are now, uh, then feel free to uh, type in on the side. I think it's that way. That way. That way. That way. Uh, there's some space to type, and you can type in, uh, you have to sign in and type in some questions for us. We will answer your questions uh, about the future uh, in the past the, for you, the future for the past, something like that. All right, so um, yeah, so I'm going to answer those in a little bit, but to give you a little time with the time delay here, we're going to go ahead and uh, have uh, Mungo come up. He believes he has something he wants to share with you, uh, so let's give Mungo a moment here. And uh, yeah. Do you want that chair? Oh, no chair, no necessary. chair, no chair necessary. All right, so this is uh, this is Mungo's Minute. Yeah, so uh, as you know, we have a little problem here on the ship. An infestation, you might say, of these nagging, flying drones. And then looking back in history, into your time, where you are now, there are things similar to these. These bees that you had back then that were so necessary to your survival. There was a certain species that they referred to as Africanized. Now, there are many mysteries as to what that may actually mean, but there are ties between those bees and these drones do not know the actual connection, but there is an infestation. And in your time, you use pesticides and chemicals and things of that nature, but in the future, we have more sophisticated means. But alas, these drones here, we cannot get rid. Mm. <laughs> Some sobering thoughts from Mungo. Thank you, Mungo. All right. Um, hey, questions from the past. Did anybody ask some questions? We, we've got one. All right. So uh, the Caltron's going to give us, make it official. Questions from the past. I would, who, who said that? It just came out of nowhere. Okay, question from the past. MK4221 asks, spiked rings can help defend against... The micro white rhino virus? Oh, that's an interesting question. So you guys don't probably deal with the micro white rhino virus, but um, that's I don't know. What do you think? Would it would it work? work spike rings? Hmm. I'm gonna say no. No. <laughs> no. Because you would have just 
than punching yourself. Well, you're not allowed to hurt them because they're. Oh, dangerous. and also, yes, you would have been arrested for using them. So no, you cannot use the spike rings against the micro white rhino virus. I did this once and got tackled. Yeah, and we have one more question. <laughs> this next question is from Dennis Ricardo. Did we, humanity, ever find Bigfoot? <laughs> did we? Wow, this is an important one. Um, did we ever find Bigfoot? Do one of you guys know about this? Oh, wait. I've studied the Bigfoot. Studied? <laughs> I noticed that you shaved your face recently. I did. This is smooth. Uh, we don't know anything about Bigfoot. Definitely people. not someone on our ship. I can guarantee you of that. Definitely not derived from Bigfoot's being in the DNA. <laughs> There's no no Bigfoot DNA was used. Not me. Uh, this ship. <coughs> All right, excellent. Thank you very much for your questions from the past. We'll be back next month with more of these, so if you missed out on your opportunity, save them up now and you'll be ready for the next show. Uh, and, and honestly, only have one more thing, which we're going to play another song for you. We're keeping it short this month. Uh, we'll be back every month, live from space, on the Detritus with the band League of Space Pirates. And um, yeah, let's play music instead of talking. <laughs> That was uh, Pete Shelley of the Buzzcocks, ancient Earth hero. I uh, really appreciate uh, him making that music for us. All right, so uh, I guess that's everything. We should probably get back on our. We gotta go. Oh, oh drive! Oh. Oh. See, I told, I told. Oh. Ah! Get it! Kill it! We got it. Come on, we got. Uh, we got to fumigate the ship.
Ouais Arrête 